Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're moving on with Unit 4, Section 2, as we continue to talk more about net ionic equations. In our last video, we learned about how to determine the solubility rules and to determine if something is uh, soluble or not in solution. In this video, we're going to apply those rules. So let's try an example here. Let's see what happens when solutions of barium nitrate and sodium sulfate are mixed vigorously. Well, the first thing that you want to do is isolate your uh, reactants and write them in ionic form if possible. So in this first one, we have a barium nitrate, and we know that nitrates are soluble, so we need to write that in its ion form. So that would be barium 2 plus and nitrate ions. Now next we have sodium sulfate. So that's also soluble, and we know that because it says that there's a solution of that as well. So is it soluble? Yes, so we have to write these in its ion form. So that would be sodium, Na+, and sulfate is SO4, 2 negative. Now once you write these reactants in ion form, you need to realize that the ions are going to try to swap partners. So that means that this barium over here is going to try to pair up with the other negative ion. And likewise, this sodium is going to try to pair up with the other compound's negative ion. They're going to try to swap out. And we have to ask ourselves, which of those combinations is going to produce an insoluble compound? Now, in order to answer this, we have to know our solubility rules. And if you remember the solubility rules from last video, you might remember, or hopefully, that barium sulfate is the combination that's going to be insoluble. So yes, you need to know those solubility rules. Now, these other ions that don't do anything, we call those spectator ions. Because essentially, well, they're spectators. They're just sitting there. They're not doing anything. They aren't actually participating in the game, as it were. They aren't participating in the chemical reaction. So what's going to happen is the barium 2 plus ions are going to react with the sulfate, SO4 2 negative ions. And when they get together, they're going to make barium sulfate. And so this is how you would write the overall equation for this process. Now, when you write this, this is something called the net ionic equation. And the net ionic equation essentially omits these spectator ions, those ions that really aren't doing anything in the reaction. Let's try another example. Let's try a chemist takes a flask of potassium chloride and adds a few drops of silver nitrate solution. So once again, we start with the first one, potassium chloride. That's soluble, so we have to write it in its ion form. So that would be K plus and Cl negative. And then we have silver nitrate solution. Of course, that's in solution, so it's soluble. So silver nitrate would be Ag plus and then nitrate is NO3 negative. And just like last time, those ions are going to try to swap partners. The outsides are going to get together or try to get together, and the insides will try to get together. So once again, we have to ask ourselves, which of those combinations is going to produce an insoluble compound? And once again, you have to think back to your solubility rules. All nit nitrates are soluble, but Silver chloride is not soluble, is it? So you have to know that this is the combination that's actually going to make the insoluble precipitate, the product. So that means that these other two, your potassium ion and your nitrate ions, those are called spectator ions, aren't they? So we have to take the Ag plus and the Cl negative, and those will combine to make AgCl solid. So that's how you'd write the net ionic equation for that process. Let's try another example. Solutions of calcium nitrate and zinc chloride are mixed in a beaker. Once again, the same process. Calcium nitrate, well, it's soluble. All nitrates are soluble, so that would be calcium ion, Ca2+, and NO3 negative, just like that. And then we have zinc chloride. Once again, that's soluble, so it's zinc 2 plus and chloride negative. 
And just like we did before, these ions are going to try to swap out. And we have to ask ourselves, which of these is going to make the insoluble precipitate? And you might be thinking, well, hang on here. All nitrates are soluble, so it's not that one. And uh, chlorides are soluble too, aren't they? And this is not an exception, so it actually looks like uh, none of these will make the insoluble precipitate. And that's correct. As it turns out, there is no precipitate formed, and all of these are actually spectator ions, the calcium, the nitrate, the zinc, and the chloride. And so when that happens, when the nothing's going to react, well, it's no reaction. And that does happen sometimes, where you add two solutions, and you look in the beaker or look in the flask, and nothing happens. It's a no reaction. Now, just so you know, uh, generally speaking, on the AP chemistry exam, they're not going to give you uh, too many of these no reactions. There's going to be something that reacts uh, for the most part. But just be aware that in the real world, in the laboratory, yeah, you can mix uh, solutions and nothing happens. That is not unusual. Let's try another one. Solutions of potassium phosphate and lead 2 nitrate are allowed to react in a test tube. So same deal here. We're going to take the potassium phosphate and that's a solution. So it's K plus and phosphate is PO4, 3 negative. And we're going to add lead 2 nitrate to that. So that would be PB2 plus and then NO3 negative. And the same thing. The ions are going to swap out here, and we have to ask ourselves, which of these two combinations is going to make the insoluble compound? And hopefully you remember the rule from the last video that phosphates are generally insoluble, aren't they? So it's going to be the lead 2 phosphate. Now that means that your potassium and your nitrate, and those don't make a solid, so those are going to be the spectator ions. And so I'm going to write them over here just in their ion form. And we're going to make this lead 2 phosphate. So when you write the net ionic equation, we have Pb2 plus plus PO4 3 negative, the phosphate, will yield lead 2 phosphate. So there's our net ionic equation. One little detail that you want to take care of though, notice this is not a balanced equation. You want to balance that equation. So we have three lead atoms and, and two phosphate ions on both sides of the arrow. So that's generally speaking how we write net ionic equations. Now we could stop there and say that's it, but the fact is there are a couple other things you need to know about. There are some details. There are a few compounds that sometimes you'll encounter in these equations, in these products, that don't actually exist. There are three special cases where that's the case. And these are substances that do not exist at normal temperatures and pressures. They just really don't exist. And so instead of being produced, they're going to undergo what's called a gas evolution reaction. Now, the first one, carbonic acid, is one that we've talked about a little bit in Unit 3. Carbonic acid will uh, basically spontaneously turn into water and carbon dioxide. And so this is essentially carbonated water is what you have here. Now sulfurous acid, H2SO3, undergoes something similar except it's going to produce water and sulfur dioxide gas. So that's the gas evolution reaction for that one. And ammonium hydroxide doesn't really exist either at normal temperatures and pressures. It's going to do something similar except it's going to produce water and ammonia gas. You need to know those three and what they produce. Let's try a couple of examples with these. The first one is one that you've probably seen before. Solid baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, is poured into a beaker containing a solution of vinegar, dilute acetic acid. You may have done this uh, reaction in, in elementary school and you've probably seen what happens when you mix baking soda and vinegar. Well, let's take a look at this here. So the solid baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. Now, notice that this is not in solution. So we don't ionize it. Ionic compounds are only ionized when they're dissolved in water. So since this is not dissolved, we just have to write it as NaHCO3. Now the vinegar, that acetic acid, is a weak acid. And you might remember from 
you know, back in unit three, weak acids are not ionized to any appreciable amount. So we just write it as its formula, HC2H3O2. And once again, we're going to try the same thing. We're going to try to swap these ions out here and think which of these two is going to make something. Well, if you take the H and add it with HCO3, you're going to have something. You'll have H2CO3. These others, you know, sodium and acetate, that's going to be soluble in that solution. So those are going to be ionized. Now, one thing that we hopefully remember is that H2CO3 doesn't really exist in this reaction. We should probably cross that out and replace it with water and carbon dioxide gas. And if you look at this equation and the way it's written, there really aren't any spectator ions. Everything is doing something. And so we're going to write it pretty much like this. The NaHCO3 solid, which is the baking soda, is going to react with the vinegar. That's the HC2H3O2 aqueous. And we're going to make liquid water and carbon dioxide gas. You'll see that in the form of uh, bubbles, probably quite vigorously bubbling. And then you'll have sodium ions, aqueous, and acetate ions, aqueous as well. So that's the equation for what's going on when you mix baking soda and vinegar. Let's try one more example here with a gas evolution reaction. And in this example, we're going to take a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution and add it to a beaker containing aqueous ammonium chloride. So we'll start with the sodium hydroxide up here. And that's a strong base, and it is certainly going to dissociate all the way. So we have sodium ions, and we have hydroxide ions. And then ammonium chloride. Anything that starts with ammonium is, of course, going to be soluble, isn't it? So we have NH4+, and we have Cl negative. So once again, we're trying to swap these ions. And we should try to imagine what's actually going to make something here. Well, it's not the sodium and chloride, is it? Because that's soluble. But ammonium and hydroxide tend to do something, don't they? We would think that they'd be ammonium hydroxide, right? Of course, sodium and chloride are our spectator ions. But we also know that ammonium hydroxide's not really going to exist, is it, in this equation? It's going to be ammonia and water in H3 and H2O. So we actually do have a couple of spectator ions here. We have the sodium and the chloride are the spectator ions. So what's left is going to be the NH4+, plus, which is our ammonium ion aqueous, and our hydroxide ions aqueous will produce water in its liquid state and ammonia gas, NH3. And so if you mix this, you're probably going to smell that ammonia gas. It's probably going to have a fairly strong odor to it, which is another sign of a chemical reaction. I hope you learned about how to write net ionic equations. If you did, please uh, slam that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below if you'd like. Uh, that really does help the algorithm. I'm, I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for something like 24 years, and I hope you uh, are able to learn AP Chemistry with these videos. Join me in my next video, and we're going to be learning about other types of reactions, some of which are not in solution. Thanks for watching.